Hi, Mark. How's it going? You got your book up there, Mark? Where's your book? I got a book coming up right here. There you go. Sorry, boys, that I'm late. You guys put me back so many times, I forgot when the hell it was. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing goes wrong, you know, it's the age of the internet. Put the book up. The Untold Story of Canada World Championships. Matter of fact, is, Best World Junior Team Ever. Matter of fact, they are now in training camp. Is that correct? Explain that to me, that they're going to play uh, the, the World Junior Tournament. They're going to have a tournament in Edmonton and Calgary after 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 Christmas Day, correct? Uh, yeah, not quite. They're in Red Deer right now. They're having a training camp. Uh, that's going to last until uh, mid no, mid December. Then they come up to Edmonton, and the whole tournament is being held at uh, Rogers Place inside the bubble, just like the NHL playoffs were. Oh, so so they and they'll be in front of no fans, and there'll be no media in the building. It'll just be uh, the players, media. coach. There'll be some media, but there won't be any scouts. No scouts will have to watch it on on the television, like the rest of us. That's right. How how hard is that? To scout? Yeah. How do you from a television? Remember the Islanders? Who tried that? Was it the Islanders tried that for a season when they wouldn't send any scouts to buildings? Remember that? Might have been Buffalo. Might have been Buffalo that tried that. And yeah, listen, if everybody else gets to go and you don't, then you're at a disadvantage. But in this case, uh, nobody gets to come, right? So everyone's going to scout it off TV, and I guess there's no one at a disadvantage. Classic Buffalo. <laughs> So tell me about how far back do you go in the book and uh, what are some of the good stories? I know Wayne Gretzky played in the World Juniors in around 1978. That was a really good team. What do you, what, what do you think was the best junior team Canada ever put together? Well, there's, there's really little doubt uh, that the best junior team ever put together by anybody was the Sidney Crosby team in, uh, in 2006 in uh, North Dakota, right? That was a team that had Shea Weber, it had Jeff Carter, it had uh, Getzlaff, it had Perry, it had, you know, I mean, a million guys that were on the cover. Uh, Patrice Bergeron played on that team. They were, it was the lockout year, so nobody um, obviously was playing in the NHL, so every top prospect was available. That team rolled through the competition in North Dakota like no problem, uh, won every game, didn't lose a period of hockey the whole time through. Talk about uh, the early days. The early days of the World Junior. It wasn't really covered very much in the early days, was it? When did that start, and how did that all come about? Well, the, the you know what the cool thing about it was, Ash. I think that you know, people probably don't know at the. I don't know what the states used to do in the old days because this is my book's really focused on Canada and the program of excellence, and and they used to send over the Memorial Cup champion. So they take a team like the Cornwall Royals, you know, in the in the 70s, and they'd send them over there after they won the Memorial Cup. So they'd probably lost a couple of players. They'd go over there. They'd play the Soviet Union back in those days. And, you know, they, they weren't ready for the big ice. They weren't ready for European officials, right? It's a whole new ball game compared to how we play. And they were getting stomped. So an old cat named Murray Costello went to the three heads of the junior leagues in Canada and said, look, I want to take your best players. I want to take them in December. I want to keep them over Christmas from across the country. I want to take them over to Europe to some tournament that frankly, Canadians don't even care about at this point. And we're going to try to win this thing. And it's going to be good for junior hockey. And it was a hell of a selling point for him. It was a tough sell, <laughs> but he did sell it. And you know what? His vision was pretty strong because he started the program of excellence back in 82. And to this day, uh, I'm not saying Canada's the best country, but they're certainly in for a, a chance at a gold medal every year. Do you think that we've heard, do you think that the U.S. is catching up to Canada in, in hockey? Oh, no question, right? No question. They are. Uh, they do. Everyone does a little bit different, right? Ash, they, they you know, the, the States puts that junior team together in, in Michigan and they play all year long, right? Mm -hmm. so, the under 18 team. Yeah, the under-20 team. They play the under-20 team. You know, so, I mean, let's face it. It's, it's a facet of the numbers. You know, Canada has a lot bigger hockey base to choose from than the U.S. does. But the U.S. takes their best, what, 25, 30 U-20 players. They play together as a team all season long. So Canada's team comes together on about December 12th in a normal year. And the States plays 40 games. 
So, you know what? It's been a big equalizer. That American team now is they give Canada, you know, as good as they get. Uh, there's not much to choose from between the two sides anymore. Do you think uh, it, it, that that the I, I know you're Canadian biased, but do you think at some point that the U.S. could overtake Canada as far as with, the, with all the people they have in the U.S.? Um, I'm not. First of all, I'm not Canadian biased. I mean, it's it's you know I'm an objective journalist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it would. I mean, I guess the issue, the issue in Canada and the U.S. is this, guys. Um, in Canada, we tend to have the best athlete become a hockey player. You know, the best athlete at school, the best athlete on the street, they tend to play hockey. Not always, right? Not always. We're churning out some pretty good basketball players. we got a kid playing soccer over in uh, the Bundesliga that's killing it over there. But generally speaking. Yeah, you got a couple of good football players, too. We got some football players, but generally speaking, in the states, is the best athlete turning into a hockey player, right? Or is the best athlete turning into a football player, or is he turning into a basketball player? There's more choices there, and it splits the pool. There's a lot more people in the states, you know, but there's a lot less hockey people in the states. So, will they catch Canada? They might catch Canada and win some gold medals and and you know win some championships. Will they ever catch Canada in the depth of talent to choose from? They still got a long ways to go. Put it that way. Uh, you uh, you approving of the Olympics? The NHL going back to the Olympics? And and you're a guy that's really in the know. What's going on with the with? Let's get to the NHL now with the CBA. What's going on with that? And they, they want to redo the CBA. I'm really I re- I must have read the article three times, and I'm still confused. Well, let's face it. When, when they when they put together the new CBA so that they could get back and play their last playoffs, right? The playoffs that began in the end of July. Um, you know, they envisioned that starting the 1920 or the 2020-21 season that they would be able to play in front of fans. So all the economics in that CBA were based on when we get back, we'll have a good old normal revenues. Well, we know now that they're going to start this season with no fans and they may end the season with no fans. So I get how the owners are going back to the players and saying, hey, you know what that old deal we did? It doesn't work for us if we can't sell a ticket and we can't sell a hot dog or a beer. So that's where they're at right now, actually, is they're trying to figure out, you know, the players are going to have to take a further pay cut to the one they agreed to, uh, or the owners have the right to say, look, we're just not going to play a season. Do you think that's a possibility? They don't want to. Bettman wants to play. Most of the owners want to play. I get it. They want to play. They don't want to take the season off. But they don't want to pay you know, Connor McDavid, $12.5 million based on an 82 game season with fans when he's only playing a 60 or 48 game season with no fans, right? That's the economics of that don't work real well either. Yeah, you're right. Well, what, what have you heard on that front? Have you heard that? Because I've heard like about five different stories. I've heard, I've heard 70, then I heard 56, then I've heard 70, then I've heard 48. What's, uh, what, what, what's your take on, on, on as far as the schedule goes? And, and as far as are they going to do the, the rumor was I also heard was that each individual's uh, division was going to have their own hub and they were going to play in the hub, but they're going to do what baseball did and have some games and play maybe two or three in one building and do it like that. My understanding is that the uh, Elliot Friedman reported that there is a, a 60 game schedule on the table at the moment. Um, so they, if, if they can settle this thing and the, the player, the PA and the NHL have to come to an agreement pretty quick here. Uh, but if they can start in early January, they can have an early, they can have a 60 game schedule. They'll start the playoffs mid May and they will be done before the Olympics begin on July 22nd. I think the last day of the Stanley cup final is reported to be about um, I think July 15th. Uh, so that all works. If you can get a 60 game schedule in, they'll have four different divisions. Teams will travel around within their divisions. There will be no bubble per se that I I'm, is my understanding, but the Canadian division, no one crosses the border. Everybody stays up here in Canada. And then there's three divisions in the States and they all play each other within the division. So it's going to be a weird year, no matter how it shakes down. Now, what about uh, when, we get to the, when we get down to two teams, what happens if a Canadian team finally gets to the Stanley Cup final? What are they going to do? Because uh... excellent question, isn't it? <laughs> what are they going to do? Uh, I would say to you this, I would say that first of all, by then, I think by the time we get to the Stanley Cup final, now we're talking about July of 2021, 
I think we're hoping that, that you know, we're, we've moved past the pandemic or we're on the way past the pandemic, right? Maybe the, what's the stumbling block here is that Canada has a 14 day quarantine for anyone coming in from the States. So I think they're hoping that by that time, that 14 day quarantine doesn't exist. If it does, Ash, you know what? They're going to have to do think on their feet like everybody else is doing these days. You're absolutely right. Anyways, Mark, thanks for doing this. I appreciate it. I'd like to have you in again, download again. The book is Hold It Up, the own Soul story of the Canadian juniors at the World Junior Championships. Talks about junior hockey and its history. Mark Spector, thank you. Thanks, Ashley.